I want to share with you this wonderful scholarship opportunity that is fully funded by the Turkish government for all international students. This scholarship is for bachelor's, master's, and PhD students. It is the Tokyo Buslari Scholarship. You can apply for this scholarship without IELTS. Around 5,000 scholarships will be provided, and I would like you to be part of this wonderful opportunity. Hi, my name is Sylvia, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time on the channel and you like this content, and you like contents like this, please click the subscribe button to be part of this channel and turn on your notification bell to get notified immediately we upload contents like this so that you don't miss the deadline. Also like and share this video so that others can see this and YouTube could also recommend it more to people. So let's go through this step by step. So we're on the website of the scholarship board the Tokyo Buslari Scholarship. And just been at the site, on the website, you can already see it's just five steps to making this application. The first is you have to create your personal account. Second is you upload all your required documents. The third is the list, list your true universities and program preferences. The fourth is you write original letter of intent explaining why this should be a good opportunity for you. And the last is the review. So as we go on, I'm going to be explaining this, especially when we are already on the portal for filling this and give you some tips that is, that is required when going through these steps. It's really pretty much easy. So it's pretty much not difficult, but you have to make sure you get all the required documents ready so what do you need when you are already going to make this application so here it says you need a valid identity card so your passport you need a photograph that is not um, that is within one year a national exam result if any a diploma a transcript an international exam result like gre if required by the chosen university so it depends on your university if it doesn't require this so you don't need this international language like TOEFL so if required also so if it's not required by your chosen university or program so you wouldn't also be needing TOEFL and a proposal a research topic maybe you are this is only for PhD application so yeah that's what I wanted to say so once you have this requirements ready on your PC saved somewhere on your PC then I think without wasting much time we'll just hit this application and log on but before we do this i would like to also um let's see what is the application criteria so it says for undergraduates the minimum academic achievement should be 70 percent for graduate candidates it should be 75 percent for candidates of health science it should be 90 percent and the age criteria so basically, you should be under the age of 21 years for undergraduate program, under the age of 30 for a master's program, under the age of 35 for PhD, and if you're going for research scholarship, under the age of 45. So this is basically what it says here. 70% 70, 70 for bachelor, 75 for master's and PhD, medicine, 90%. That is the minimum level of academic achievement you should have. And the limits here, 45 years for research, 35 for PhD, 30 for master's and under the age of 21 for bachelor's students. And the eligibility here says citizens of all countries. So everyone is open to this open to the scholarship and graduates are those who would graduate at the end of the current academic year. So if you're going to also graduate before August of 2022, you can already apply for this maybe for your master program. And you are ineligible if you are a Turkish student, a Turkish citizen, or you've lost your Turkish citizenship. You are not eligible to apply, or you're already an individual who is already enrolled in the program in Turkish university, so you are not also eligible. So this is just for international students that is about to start their studies in, in Turkey. Let's have a look at what this scholarship is 
going to be covering so the scope of the scholarship so basically it's a full-time scholarship and these are the scope so it's going to be covering university and department placements it will take care of this and it, you'll be receiving a monthly stipend if you're an undergraduate you'll be receiving 1700 Turkish lira 2400 for a master student and 3000 Turkish lira for PhD students so it's basically going to be tuition free and you would have the opportunity to attend one year Turkish language course it will be you'll be provided with accommodation you'll be provided with health insurance and you would also have the opportunity of once of flight tickets to and fro so this is a good opportunity I encourage us to apply to this as soon as we see this so that we don't miss out on the deadline So before we go on to the application, I would like to point out this important thing, which is the application calendar. So here it says the application period is open from January 10th until the February 20th. So please do well to apply to this as soon as you see this. And um, it says evaluation process is to be evaluated March, April, May. Then the interview would be in June and July. Announcement of results will be early August. Initial procedures will be in August, transfer of grantees to Tokyo is September. So they're going to transfer these grantees on in September and it would encourage you to put these timelines on your calendar so that that way you get to know at what stage it is you are in your application and not to miss out on any important details. So once we hit this application and log on button, it would redirect us to where we would be making this application. So here is where you're going to be making this application. It's completely free. So you need to register before initiating any application and it takes only around two minutes to do this. And it says that the application process takes 30 to 60 minutes. So I would basically ask you to have some time when making this application. You can also save and come back to it later. So that way you don't rush anything or, or forget anything. So if you're a first time user, you click on this to register yourself. But if you have in the past um, registered for this scholarship before, so you just log on with your email and password. But since I'm a first time user, I'm going to click on this register to register myself. Once I click on this, it brings me directly to this place. So where you would fill the gender, the date of birth, basically everything here. And it says, please enter, enter your name as it is written in your official document. Do not use nicknames. So this is very important here. Every information you put here should, should be as accurate as possible so that there will be no need for denial if there is... Um, a case of maybe misrepresentation. So please, by all means, put all the names the way it is on your passport or on ID card or in your ID card. After filling that column, you would come here. It would say, um, there are Sylvia, this registration has been successfully completed. So you will receive an activation email in your email that you provided so that you would click on that. So you have to make sure you give a valid email. And when I go to my mailbox here, this is where I see this particular, um, the link. So I'm going to click on this to bring me to this place. So once I'm here, I'm going to click on this. And now it says I should enter with my email and the password that I already used to create in the beginning. So once I have signed on with my email and password, then it brings me to this landing page where it says, yes, this is the particular information I already gave when I was pre-filling it. And I would come over here to edit. And here you make sure you select anything as applicable to you. Make sure you fill this correctly. And I have a citizenship of another country. That is, if I have, you check this box. But if not, you continue. Then feel free to fill anything that is relating to you. So 
take your time and feel every everything you feel that is necessary. And after you have, might have done that, you hit save. The number of mandatory fields to be filled. So this is good. It gives you a checklist of what needs to be filled, which you have not filled. So if there is anything highlighted in red means this is very important to be filled. So by all means, please fill that in. Like for example, I have to fill in my passport because this is necessary. I have to put this city of birth. I'm going to put my city of birth. And then, so I have gone ahead to fill in all what is required so that you wouldn't have any um, alarm or anything in red. So by all means also, I would encourage you to also click here and attach a profile photo. This is very important. So after you might have done this, you hit save. The number of money to refuse to be filled in, in the pages for Please feel the required. Okay, let me see what is still mandatory. Okay, the passport number, type of passport. So this is also mandatory to be filled. So I have gone ahead to pre-fill every needed and necessary details and I would hit save. And personal information has been successfully updated. So if you, at this point, maybe you want to take some break, you can just already take a break or Otherwise, you continue and say edit information on hobbies. So you edit this as well and you select what your hobbies are. And I will just check this. Astronomy animal. And I hit save. Enter the information about your hobby. So it's also telling you what you need to do. So you could simply write what. Your hobbies are so because this is showing in red you have to write something so i simply wrote i love animals and i click on save and automatically it's saved for me so that way you continue step by step until you finish the section regarding personal information then you come to the next section which is family information so if you have updated everything Right by clicking edit and you have filled in everything correctly, just like I did. I selected already. Um, I'm interested in sport, music, arts, and uploaded a profile picture. That way, it gives you this check mark. So, this means okay, everything is fully completed, so you have filled it out properly. So, then you can move to the next one, and by all means. Fill out everything that is applicable to you and make sure it's all correct because they emphasized at the beginning of the application that everything should be correct. So make sure you fit all these ones marked in red means that this is really very important to be filled. So I encourage you to take pay more attention whilst filling personal information, family information, contacts, info, education info, language details, work experience here, yeah, it's marked in yellow. It's not like so high powered, but I would also encourage you to fill it all out correctly. For example, let us go to the most important for me, I feel is the education information because we're all about education. We want to get the scholarship to study. So here you would also see it and the first is middle school you click on it and here it brings you to select your country nigeria i am from nigeria you select this and you basically go through this i don't want this video to be too long guys if you are really getting value from this and you like this video please i like you to hit the like button to encourage me and also to make youtube recommend this video more to a lot of people and click the subscribe button if you have not done so after you might have filled up filled out all fields you click on save and when i click on this right now it's going to tell me yes i have things to be that i need to fill that on mandatory so please that way you it keeps keeps it in track of what needs to be filled and make sure at the end of it, it gives you this check 
mark sign yes it's a very important i would also like to point out in this point this talk here experience here it says um are you in talking now or have you ever been to talk so here please by all means please answer it as honest as possible so as not to risk a chance of not being selected do you have a relative who is currently or was previously a holder so if no you just simply know if it is yes you say yes and that way you first please specify how you learned about the scholarship so maybe you learned it through any of this yes you can just select any of those so please i encourage you to feel it very correctly and as well as all other ones this is really important. i would like to point out this particular section for us to be aware of when you click when you click on this terms and condition of application you will see this so this i would encourage you to read through it again to understand what they require of you on this particular application site and here it says that your document should be in pdf jpeg png so make sure you are in any of this format so that it should accept the document that you are trying to upload and does not exist five exceed five mb so please pay attention to that and please do well to read through any of this term meaning any of these requirements to know what it means and importantly it is a headshot photo a headshot that clearly shows your facial features taken within the last six months so please i encourage you to read this is a very important condition that they want you to know that is why they attached it on this platform so that you can also go through it and see what you are doing so when you're done you can just close it so please note this is very important if after having gone through each of these tabs carefully and you have feel that everything and it's already checking this um blue or green sign then that means you have duly completed everything required of you i mean everything required so please do well to please by all means go through it take your time sit down feel it rest come back to it and continue then after you you might have done everything you click on home page so this is where it will then bring you to the scholarship we're talking about yes and now it's telling me you cannot proceed to the application as you have not filled in the mandatory fields. Please provide the information marked with red exclamation mark on the left. So this is what I said. So please do well to fill out these ones. It's very important to them, but I encourage you to also fill out the ones in yellow. It is also important as well so that by the time you fill everything so that you can now have the opportunity to see all the scholarship that is um, related to you because your ability to fill out everything correctly will enable the system will enable the system to bring out scholarships that suits you and in that way you can already see i've not filled anything but i'm just seeing undergraduate scholarship program so here you would see the general themes and condition that you need so this is very good they at every point in time tell you what you need so that you will keep it in mind so i like the way this portal is it's really very easy step by step telling you what to do so all you need to do is bring out your time sit down at home and go through this and you also see the scholarship our scholarship program so it also the, tells you the condition for this and once if, for example, I have filled out everything correctly and I'm interested in the master's program, it is it's also showing me the graduate scholarship program, the art scholarship program. If it is a PhD, same thing, it will show you what needs to be done. And in that way, you can then hit apply. And this means you are now directly applying for this particular scholarship. This video and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And now, if you hit apply, it will simply tell me missing your high school information. Yes, because I have not done this. So it will always bring you back to where you should continue. And when I click add now, it brings me back here to make sure I fill in all these necessary fields. Like I said, if you have high school, you add it. 
middle school you add it you have a bachelor's you add it so yeah depending on what you're applying for so please by all means view this i don't want this video to be too long that is why i don't want to really go so much in details for them each of them but if you have correctly filled everything out it will give you this check sign here then that's where you know that you've done everything correctly and you hit over to home page and you hit apply and at this point you would see the list of the universities that you could choose from so once you are applying already for an undergraduate scholarship you'll see the list of university where you could select up to 12 universities of your choice so i encourage you at this point at that point to select all the 12 universities you want to study in maybe you first of all select two to be in the capital city two maybe in in less populated city so that you have chance to so spread your chances around don't maybe select everything in one in the major city and that way if it is too congested you might not have a chance so maybe select in capital city select a city that is less um populated maybe student might not want to go to those schools and you might also yeah have a chance to get in in those schools and you select your course that you want to study and I also at this point encourage to select courses that are similar for example you might not want to select first course business um, administration and the next course is select medicine so this two doesn't relate well so try to select courses that are closely related that way they could see the relationship in what you are selecting and try to give you one of those courses so with it, with this i would like to say good luck in your application i would really hope that you get this scholarship drop your comments in the comment section below if you have any like share and subscribe to the channel and with this i'm going to say thank you and see you in my next video